Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Adrian Ramos, and today I'm going to talk about the sweatshops and how they play a role in the clothing industry and how they are unethical of all of them. For a better understanding of what a sweatshop is, here's the dictionary definition. A factory or a workshop, especially in the clothing industry, where manual workers are employed at very low wages for long hours under poor conditions. By exploiting poverty-ridden countries, first world countries are able to produce clothing at, ex at an extremely low price and sell them for over 200% higher in stores for the best profit possible. The majority of consumers don't know or they don't care about what goes on in these factories. This brings me to my first point. The, condition of these of the conditions these people work in are strenuous, dangerous, and unethical. Problems like this have been talked about for so long, but have basically been pushed under the rug. These types of jobs have been given to people in poverty, which makes them vulnerable to take on these types of jobs. In need of money, these people, including children, all work endless hours in these environments just to supply for themselves. <clears throat> As they work hard without proper gear or protection for, with some heavy machinery, they run very high risks of injuries. These workers do not have, in, these, these workers do not have insurance or benefits, which, which does not allow them wiggle room for any money. Injuries caused by conditions in the factories allow no healing time because they cannot afford the time off of work. Sometimes they even put it sometimes it even takes them out of work completely, which forces them in to bring their families and to help pay for the cost of living. Families working together takes me to my next claim. Families, including young children, work endlessly, work endless hours in harsh conditions to supply for themselves. <clears throat> Parents bring in their children a lot of time because two incomes are still insufficient for the family. In 2016, at least 12.3 million people were working like this. About 90% of these were women and children. Children are often pulled out of elementary school as as young as five years old and put into the workforce. These children have more stamina and more energy because they are so young and tend to work 60 to 90 work hours, work hour weeks. These children grow old in these sweatshops because of their lack of education and does not allow them to go higher with higher education and get higher paying jobs. As they grow older, terrible conditions of the factories give them health problems later in life and give them shorter lifespans. These health problems can consist of lung cancer or respiratory issues because of the poor air quality in these workshops. Some of the women in these sweatshops are, that are pregnant are forced to work in the same condition and same labor quality as the others. This hurts the development of the baby and the health of the mother, causing birth deformities or even maybe losing the baby. These overworked women do not have any money for doctors they, and they tend to do home births, which run high risks for both the baby and the mother. If the mother goes to the doctor, she's stuck with huge medical bills that she has no money to pay for them. <clears throat> As we can all see, how sweatshops are only good for the clothing industry and not for the workers, causing injuries, a shorter lifespan, health issues, as well as um, hospital bills, possibly. By exploiting poverty in third world countries, the clothing industry is able to profit from the cheap labor and enables workshops to thrive and continue hurting, mistreating, and overworking vulnerable people. Vulnerable people. Thank you. Well, the proposition is not uh, as clear as it needs to be. Once again, we start with a question, how these sweatshops do this particular thing instead of they do these things that are harmful. So let's get the declarative sentences in your proposition, especially in the secondary points as well. Uh, you've got two claims here, and the second one is a value claim, so it doesn't really belong in this argument because this is supposed to be a claim of fact. Um, there's not really much of a preview of what the supporting points are going to be. Uh, we've just got some general 
general explanation about what sweatshops are like and you know what the whole idea of the clothing industry consists of. Uh, and then the main points are presented as you go along. Now there is a signpost on each of those points, so that helps a little bit, although I think your third point is a little ambiguous, and I'm not sure how it di is distinct from the second point. Uh, the conditions of the, of the sweatshops that you talk about, uh, you mentioned uh, you know, the risks and dangers and that sort of thing, but I don't see any evidence that talks about uh, the number of injuries or the kinds of equipment that are being operated. Uh, there's not, uh, you know, any, I, I, for lack of a better term, casualty figure list here that's going on. So this is mostly asserted on your part, and it shouldn't be that hard to find some information to support the position that you're taking here, that people who work in these uh, situations are more likely to have uh, serious injuries and, and perhaps even death. Uh, if somebody has died, for instance, that's definitely there are going to be some official statistics about that kind of uh, issue. Then there's an argument about how the kids get pulled into this and that has a long-term impact on their future lives, which does make sense. I understand the concept here, but once again, that's all asserted. There's not really any evidence here on this. Uh, the, there's a, one place where you do suggest some statistical information about the total number of workers in these situations, about the percentage that are primarily women and children, and I think that that's good information. It would be better information if a source was provided to go along with it. After that, we don't really get any additional sources being cited. We just get the usual uh, kind of description of what the potential problems are here. And I, I think that this is the main weakness with the argument is that there's not a lot of evidence to support these things. I know what your position is. I know the issues that you think exist are. Uh, what I need is some proof that they do in fact exist. And of course, the, you suggest that there is maybe a potential argument from the clothing industry about uh, providing jobs and uh, incomes for these folks. Uh, it's, it's almost like you've got a, a, a rebuttal argument being built up here, but it's not a very strong rebuttal argument. The alternative in the absence of the clothing industry is not discussed. What jobs or uh, problems would they face if the clothing industry was not located in these particular places? Um, you know, uh, people who have the jobs versus people who don't have the jobs. If you could show, for instance, that there's a greater risk for the people who have the jobs, your argument would be a lot more convincing. Um, you know, the idea that there's exploitation going on, I definitely think that that's uh, probably true, and that is a value argument, so it's got less to do with what our assignment is. Um, you know, we're trying to talk about what the factual issues are. Uh, the idea that there's some additional risk, I think, needs to be demonstrated a lot more. There's a lot of reading in the presentation, and you use just a little over half of your time, so you had a lot more time. I think it would have been help to, helpful for you to cite some information uh, more consistently, and, that, and you had time to do that, so it shouldn't be a problem to be able to do that. Thank you.